I've just been out doing some trimming, but I came in because we got some mail today and it's from Busted Radio Garage. Now, I'm not sure if there's something wrong with Chris or what, but he's got this obsessive compulsion to give stuff away all the time. So go subscribe. He's always doing giveaways. He's giving away a whole lift. He's crazy. And he's got a couple awesome drag cars. Super nice guy. He sent me this because, just because, because he hadn't sent me anything. So I have no idea what's in here. He just said he was going to send me something. So should we open it up? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Oh, my knife's broken. I forgot about this one. All right. Let's get this tape open here. This is nice. Yeah. Fluffy. This yeah. costs twenty-three dollars to send. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of allowance, isn't it? <laughs> All anyone can see right now is your back, buddy. I'll come over here. All right. What do we think's in here? Yeah. Mail. Mail. What is, what's in there? Should we see? Let's see. What's gonna fall out? What's that? Yeah. Whoa, look, it's a big sticker. Yeah. Yeah. Look. That's Linda. Yeah. That's one of their drag cars. Sweet. What Sweet. is this? What is this? Yeah. If we find out, I think it's a big. Moscow. My big car. Whoa, what is it? Yeah. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> My big car. Wow, is that a sweet poster? Yeah. Wow. Do you like that car? Yeah. That's Linda. Yeah. It's it's got Linda. Is it fast? Yeah. Yeah. It's your Linda. Wow. Can it's you? Your Linda. Yeah. Look, you're showing everyone Linda. Yeah. Can you say thank you, Chris? That's okay. Good job. Can you say go subscribe? Go to Busted Radio Garage. Good job. <laughs> I'm impressed. That was good. And you got a sweet tube. Do you like the tube? Yeah. Yeah. But oh, oh, where's your arm? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Robot arm. Ah! 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 Don't send any more weapons, please. <laughs>
this whole thing didn't keep moving. There we go. Good. Next question. Ah, beautiful. Okay, good stuff. Okay, uh, the hope is to get at least a puff out of this thing. I didn't think I had to bring the Milwaukee drill home from work, so I'm stuck with the Ryobi, but it does have enough jam to do it, so let's just see if we get anything out of this. Oh, -ho! that to me is a resounding yes. Can't believe it. Too bad, not too bad at all. Um, it's together. I cannot believe it, but it was running. Now, come on now. Oh, that's off. That's full throttle. Choke is on. Come on. 
Ooh. Okay, it doesn't run amazing, but the fact that it runs at all is huge. Whew. That thing runs rich. Whew. Well, I'm awfully excited that this runs. Um, it's gonna go inside, but I just want to pull this spark plug out first. That could be part of why it's not running well. I haven't pulled it out or looked at it even. Actually, it looks pretty new, not bad at all. And I say it's pretty old, but not usage wise. Nevertheless, I might replace it. Um, yeah, just really excited that it runs, that it works. That's, uh, that's fantastic. An old Champion J8C plug, made in Canada. I don't know when the last time Champion made plugs in Canada, but I'm willing to bet it's been a while. Price just went up on this thing, that's for sure. For no reason at all, I thought it might be interesting to compare this old made in Canada Champion J8C spark plug to this new one, which is made in Mexico. Or maybe it won't be interesting, but there's only one way to find out. I thought it might be interesting to compare resistance between the two. I've already measured this one, and uh, looks like we've got about, eh, about 0.8 ohms resistance in there. The new one, That's quite a lot more resistance. Point is about 188 ohms resistance. So I have heard that you can't get non-resistor spark plugs in Canada. And maybe that's true, even though this J8C you can also purchase as an RJ8C, which has a resistor. Um, but I can't find anything to say whether there's fact to that or not. What's this old guy? Here's an old RJ19LM. Yeah, I don't know if we're learning anything here or not. That just kind of got no continuity at all. Let's see if that makes it any better. starts okay but that drive mechanism is still stuck so there's 
smoke coming out of the carburetor. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to figure that out. Well, now that this whole Toro runs, it would be nice to make it kind of functional. I don't expect it to clear away the next Canadian blizzard, but it'd be nice if it, if the auger turned as it should, um, just seems to hit a spot and then stick. So if you look down there, there is a pretty good uh, dent in it. Maybe that's where it's hitting. Could be a bent shaft, could be a lot of things, but I think maybe the easiest thing to do is to get this out of the way using the power handle party trick. Um, just makes this a lot easier to toss around. So let's do that. Difficult bit, really. There we go. The belt. All right. dent right there is actually not doing us any favors at all. Well, it clears. That had something to do with it. What is that? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a wear plate. I just detached it because apparently the only thing holding this whole cover on was this one bolt, and I guess there should be one more there that was missing. So uh, that'll have to go back on. This chain is just seized, that's all there is to it. Oh, I see what's going on. Wow, okay. This is quite the mechanism. So as I'm rotating the drive pulley here, I'm noticing that this shaft is turning at a different speed from this. And I thought, well, how could that be? So this shaft is turning this chain, which goes into the gearbox. They've got two sprockets there. The one sprocket being smaller than this one. So this one then slows the speed down, drives this, this shaft, 
turns independently on this shaft and drives to the wheel. That is some very clever speed reduction right there. You can hear this snap as the chains, which are seized up, are uh, moving across. So, oh yeah, like this joint here is just rock solid. So I'm going to uh, soak all of this down with some lubricant and just keep turning it until everything frees up and hopefully it will uh, come back to us. chains on this Toro have now been soaking in penetrating fluid for about 24 hours and it would probably be better to pull the chains off and soak them in a pail of diesel or whatever but I just kind of don't want to so uh, I'm just going to apply horsepower to the problem. Hi Clyde. What do you think, buddy? Hi, Clyde. <laughs> Don't be such a chicken, huh? Pretty cool though.
okay, it, it doesn't work super well, but it does work. 